Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bioinformatics for Precision Medicine. This program will highlight biomedical applications of big data bioinformatics in the context of major diseases like cancer and chronic infection. For those joining us for the first time, my name is Ilya Brodsky. I am the co-founder and CEO of Pine Biotech. Our vision is to enhance human health and well-being by enabling biological research and discovery with relevant data, solutions, and support. Our mission is to simplify bioinformatics and advance research through our modular and intuitive multi-omics analysis platform powered by human experience and artificial intelligence. We offer training, research support, and big data analytics tools designed for research and biomedical discovery. Our mission is to continue to support cutting edge research and help solve big data challenges by developing innovative solutions that are easy to use and provide training to use them effectively and arrive at sound and reproducible results. I am honored to have been working at Pine Biotech with many others. Many of our team members have much more experience in this area than I, including Pine Biotech co-founders, Dr. Alfred Tauber, who comes from a medical background with expertise in oncology, immunology, and biochemistry of inflammation. He has a long-standing recognition for his generous support of many international projects and research activities. One of these projects is the establishment of the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center at University of Haifa. Dr. Lena Brodsky is the director of the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center and is an expert in bioinformatics and biostatistics. He has numerous publications on bioinformatics and over the course of his career has developed multiple novel algorithmic approaches for biomedical data analysis. These have been widely used in basic and translational research in biotechnology, pharmaceutical R&D, agriculture, and biomedical research. What we will discuss today is also the result of hard work by some of the people mentioned here on the left. Julia Panoff, who is an expert bioinformatician and has helped prepare many of the materials that we will use in this course. Avi Titievsky, who is a computer scientist and leads the development of the t for platform that we will utilize. Mohit Mazumdar, who is in charge of business development for Pine Biotech internationally. Joshua McKendall, who maintains the educational web portal we will leverage. And Bipsha Biswas, our online community manager and support specialist, who I am sure many of you had already had the chance to interact with. The program is designed to highlight the role of big data, bio, and chemo informatics. These are shaping modern biomedical innovation where molecular data is used for precision diagnostics, big data integration and machine learning are transforming personalization of treatment selection, and innovative algorithms that allow for unprecedented capabilities with drug discovery, design of large molecules, and drug repurposing and repositioning. Molecular data is routinely used in medicine for patient stratification and diagnosis of diseases like breast cancer. Because many patients have been diagnosed using these panels in long-term clinical trials, clinicians can assess the risk of cancer recurrence and survival based on information that they provide. In this chart, you can see a Meyer-Kaplan curve of survival and recurrence based on two clinical gene panels for breast cancer, PAM50 and Oncotype DX. These panels separate patients into three groups, high, medium, and low risk. Based on these assessments, a treatment can be selected. Traditional treatments for cancer are surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. Each one of these treatments can have multiple harmful side effects and is known to be effective in only specific situations. For example, tumors are typically irradiated before surgery or if they are considered to be somewhat benign. Chemotherapy targets cell proliferation and often affects many other cells in the body. So not just the tumor, causing severe discomfort to patients and in some cases leading to complicated and even recurrence or emergence of new cancers. However, since the 1990s, a new type of treatment started emerging in clinical use called targeted cancer therapy. One such therapy is called Herceptin or Trastuzumab. This is a monoclonal antibody that blocks the HER2 receptor, preventing it from receiving the growth factor and slowing cell growth. 
Since then, immunotherapy has transformed cancer care. Many of such precision drugs are the result of biomedical research studies of the tumor and its microenvironment. Mapping the changes that characterize tumors and the novel understanding of the biological pathways inside tumor cells, as well as signaling pathways between tumors and their microenvironment, have led to multiple innovative interventions, blocking, suppressing, and enabling existing mechanisms of action to mitigate the effects of uncontrolled proliferation and metastasis. Opdevo, also called nivolumab, is one such example. This drug was approved for medical use in the United States in 2014. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the safest and most effective medicines needed in a health system. Opdivo is a medication used to treat a number of types of cancer, including melanoma, lung cancer, renal cell carcinoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, head and neck cancer, colon cancer, and liver cancer. But these benefits require multiple biomarkers to guide treatment selection and evaluate their effectiveness, placing data analysis at the center of such precision treatments. For example, nivolumab is used as a first-line treatment for inoperable or metastatic melanoma in combination with another drug called ipilimumab, another monoclonal antibody if the cancer does not have a mutation in the BRAF gene. It is also used as a second-line treatment for inoperable or metastatic melanoma following treatment of ipilimumab, and if the cancer has a BRAF mutation, a BRAF inhibitor. It is also used to treat metastatic squamous non-small cell lung cancer with progression in or after platinum-based drugs and for treatment of small cell lung cancer. It is also used as a second-line treatment for renal cell carcinoma after anti-angiogenic treatment has failed. So you can see how these treatments, bringing novel precision, really require constant use of biomarkers and very detailed understanding of molecular processes that happen at the subcellular level. That's why data, its analysis and integration, is at the center of modern precision medicine. Researchers, biologists, doctors, and clinical lab technicians are trained to understand and utilize complicated molecular, clinical, and other high-throughput research data to diagnose disease, as well as develop, use, and evaluate treatment efficacy. Growth in data generation, specifically when it comes to high-throughput sequencing of cancer genomes and transcriptomes, has produced a big data problem that precludes many cancer biologists and oncologists from gleaning knowledge from these data regarding the nature of malignant processes, as well as the understanding of the relationships between tumor genomic profiles and treatment response. In this program, we will focus on such data, learning about the various types of omics data, including data that describes intracellular and intercellular processes associated with disease. We will also look at the role of pathogens and microorganisms in our bodies and the environment we live in to understand risks they pose to cause acute infectious disease and chronic risks that destabilize the immune system and lead to cancer-associated factors. And we will look at data sets that allow us to study the relationship between clinical and phenotypic data and understand the molecular biology characterized by omics data. What is often underappreciated in programs designed around cancer is the increasing role of viruses that we now understand who pose a tremendous risk for cancer to develop and complicate treatment. The Epstein-Barr virus, formerly called human gamma herpes virus 4, is one of such viruses, one of the most common viruses in human. It is best known as the cause of infectious mononucleosis, or mono. It is also associated with various non-malignant, pre-malignant, and malignant Epstein-Barr virus-associated lymphomas. The virus, the virus is also associated with the childhood disorders of Alice in Wonderland syndrome and acute cerebral ataxia. And based on some evidence, higher risk of developing certain autoimmune diseases such as lupus, 
rheumatoid arthritis, and multiple sclerosis. About 200,000 cancer cases per year are thought to be attributable to EBV. Another prevalent DNA virus is human papillomavirus from the papillomaviridae family. Approximately 5% of all new cancers diagnosed in 2002 were attributable to HPV. Another such pathogen is hepatitis B and C, the most common risk factor for liver cancer. About 60% of liver cancer diagnoses are due to causes of chronic hepatitis B, leading to over 